All right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you from blue sky, sunny San Diego. And today I'm joined by Tom Schwab, who is in Kalamazoo, Michigan. How are you doing, Tom? Hey, John, I am doing wonderful. It would be great to be in San Diego, but hey, uh, this proves you can do podcast interviews from anywhere. Absolutely. And, and uh, Tom is a Navy veteran who ran nuclear power plants and an inbound marketing engineer. You, Tom has a refreshing, unique approach and he focuses on time proven strategy then supercharges it with today's technology and podcast interview marketing. And that's what we're going to talk about today. And Tom is going to tell us how this is the new gold rush. Okay, Tom. So we're on a podcast. Hey, so what better than to talk about and we're on a podcast interview. So what better way to talk about it? So what do you mean by, number one, podcast interview marketing? Let's, let's just baseline it for anybody who's not 100% clear on what that means. Sure. It's that whole idea of using other people's platforms to get your message out there, the marketing. Uh, you know, in the, the old days, uh, you used to use guest blogging to get on other people's um, uh, audience. Now you can do it with podcast interviews. Uh, and really, it's that whole idea of leveraging other people's platforms, other people's um, uh, podcasts uh, to get in front of your ideal audience. Yeah. And I guess one of the first things, Tom, is like, you know, people will say, well, that sounds like a great idea, Tom, but why would anybody want me on their podcast? Like, what have I got to say? Well, that's the thing is you've got to come with value. And the thing is, is that most of us undervalue what we know and overvalue what other people know. What's ordinary to us is amazing to others. And so if it's the right podcast and you have something to offer, it could be expertise on a book you wrote, uh, the industry you're in, a different viewpoint on things, uh, you can add value that way. And really, I, I believe that the biggest problem all businesses have today is obscurity, right? With yes. our current product or service, there's thousands, millions of people that we could help. The only problem is they don't know we exist. Um, so instead of, you know, I think often the people that are telling us to break through the noise are the ones that are selling us the megaphones, right? <laughs> We're all yelling. Nobody's getting heard. I'd rather get introduced by, you know, a trusted friend, the podcast host, and get in on the conversation that people are listening to. Yeah, and absolutely. And I mean, obviously, the popularity of podcasts is is obvious today. And people have a thirst for real content, I think, especially because, uh, as you said, there's so much noise out there that I pe think people are very grateful when they get good content. And I think also that people should should look at themselves and say, okay, um, do people ever ask me for advice? Am I good at when I'm presenting to a customer or whatever when I'm presenting value? Well, if you can do that, you could probably do it on a podcast. Yeah, if you look, John, at the legal definition of an expert, it's somebody that knows more than the average person based on their education, their experience, um, you know, uh, all of that. So, you know, sometimes an expert is the PhD, but a lot of times it's that person that spends, you know, 80 hours a week for the last 10 years to know everything about that. I always say, you know, I'm an expert in a lot of things, but I am the undisputed expert in my opinion. Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just, hey, what's your view of this industry or where the trends are going? And we've all got an opinion on that. Yeah. And I think one of the things to overcome, and there's another person I interviewed, I think it's, um, I think it might've been Sharon Hughes. I can't remember, but she had this great, uh, great phrase about the imposter syndrome, you know, which holds a lot of people back from public speaking or from writing books or for podcasting. Right. And that's where, they think they've got something to say, but as soon as they are confronted with doing it, they think, oh, no, nobody's going to listen to me. You know, I, uh, I'm going to be found out that, that I'm not really an expert. And to me, doing a podcast is tough, right? Anybody that says doing it is easy no. has either never done it or never done it well. You know, John, the great ones like you make it look easy. Uh, but for me, it's like, well, what would I talk about? Could I do all, the, all of this? But on a podcast interview, people ask you questions and, yeah. you know, um, you know, about your expertise and uh, most business owners, this is the thing we love to talk about more than anything, our business, our industry, how we help people. Yeah. And what's beautiful about podcasting, and I think just to make it, uh, you know, maybe de demystified a little for people. Yes, I can understand that 
it may be difficult sometimes to go up on a stage in front of 2000 people, even if you're on a panel discussion, I get that. It may be difficult. You may have never been in a, in a TV, live TV studio or something because suddenly there's lights and there's people running around and you realize that there's only this tiny little island that you're sitting on and there's all this chaos around you. But podcasting, I mean, you're sitting in front of your computer and you're having a conversation with another human being and it's, and it's a very natural thing. Yeah, often I'll ask, you know, prospects, you know, would you drive across town to speak to 10 people or drive across state to speak to 100 or, you know, jump on a plane mm -hmm. to speak to 1,000 ideal prospects? And sometimes you can see their face drop. And it's like, no, I'm not talking in front of 10 or 100 yeah. people. And the thing is, is that, uh, you know, I, I speak a lot on stages, but I have mm -hmm. to scratch my head sometimes. I, I think of one time I had driven an hour and a half to go speak. And there was like 75 people there. I loved it. They were great. Uh, they had drinks and hors d'oeuvres. So I was happy to be there. <laughs> but I had to laugh in the middle of the presentation and just told them that, you know, I've never spoken to a podcast audience this small. And, uh, you know, I can do it from home. Um, you know, I, I don't even have to put my pants on. Uh, so from that standpoint, <laughs> so don't stand up, please. Exactly. And from that <laughs> standpoint, it's so much easier. And even, you know, I've done television and radio. And like you said, that can be um, stressful. You know, uh, the camera, the lights, or even on radio, going yeah. against the clock. You know, oh, you're in yeah. the middle of a thought and we got to go to commercial. Um, you live and die by that clock. Yeah. And I mean, especially if you've ever done live TV. I mean, I've done it a couple of times. Um, I did it, I remember memorably, I did it one time on Sky Business News in Australia and literally the commercial break, they say, go sit at that seat. And the host turned around and said, who are you again? Oh, you're okay. And we are here for what is it? Okay. And we're back. And then you realize the guy's no clue who you are, has no clue what you do and is just going to wing it. And you got to wing, you know, you got to go along with it. So that's a lot more stressful. But so um, how would you advise people to find the right podcast and how to pitch themselves to podcasters to be a guest? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And the first one I would say, um, find the right podcast, mm -hmm. right? So content is king, but context is God. There are over mm -hmm. a million podcasts out there. You don't want to be on everyone and not everyone makes a difference for you, right? Bigger yeah. is not better. Better is better. So look at what, who your ideal customers, what podcasts are they listening to? Look at the podcast itself. Look at the website, right? Because yeah. every podcast is going to send you a backlink and that can be very valuable. Look at their reach. You know, are they promoting it on social media or to their email list? And then finally, look, have they had other guests on it like me? That's the alg algorithm that we use and the four things that we look at. Now, your next question on how do you get on those podcasts? Well, I would point out there's three types of people that a podcaster want on their show. The first one is their friends. The second mm -hmm. one is friends of friends. And the third one is people that they want to be their friends. So right. nowhere on there does it say a creepy cold pitch. And <laughs> unfortunately, that's what happens. Um, I get pitched every day to be on my podcast and I don't have a podcast. But John, each one starts out, I love your show and would love to be a guest. Uh, the better the podcast, the less likely they are gonna even to open those. So mm -hmm. think about it. What can you do? If you're already friends, that's easy, right? If it's friends of friends, you can work through an agency like Interview Valet. Yeah. Um, you can ask people that are podcasters if they know these people. But the last one is, what can you do to make them want to be your friend, right? Mm -hmm. To have you on. And from that, you know, Gary Vaynerchuk talks about jab, 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 right hook. Yep. I look at it as serve, 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 ask. Right. So right. if you want to be on a podcast, leave them a rating and review. We're all vain. We look for our names, right? They'll yeah. notice you then. Um, make some comments. Uh, share the episode uh, on social media. Share it. Make some comments. After you have served, right, then reach out and say, John, I, I love the podcast. I love that episode with Tom where he talked out about this. Mm -hmm. I've got some things that I could think be helpful to you and your audience, right? If you keep yeah. serving, they will ask you to be on the show. Uh, but robo pitching, you might get a yes, but it's probably not a yes you want. Yeah, I was going to say it's probably not from the right one. Um, but it's a great point you make there because uh, if you do, if you, when you do your reach out, if you're say, if you say, 
you know, you have commented, you have shared, and you say, I really enjoyed your interview with such and such or, or with other, and I feel like I would be a good guest for you because of this. The more you can show that you actually know what the podcast is about, because as you say, I mean, you get you get pitched to be on a podcast and you're actually the podcast valet, right? <laughs> um, I sometimes get pitched by people, I want to be on your podcast, but it's clearly it's clear they've never even listened to it, right? And, and, and I'm like, so why, why would you want to be on it? I mean, you don't even know what it's about. And to me, uh, pitch or pitching mm -hmm. is the new four-letter word, right? Yeah. You pitch a baseball, you throw and a pitch an inanimate object, you introduce a human being. So I think from that standpoint, introduce yourself, don't pitch yourself. Yeah. And I think the other thing, um, and probably one of the things that you probably talk to your customers about again is, is you've got to practice a little bit maybe about being natural and being able to have a conversation. Because the one thing, I mean, certainly I find is, is people don't really connect with podcasts where it's, you ask a question and the other person gives their answer and then they ask another question and it's, you know, that kind of thing. It's, you need, you need to be able to become natural and engaged on it. The, the best podcasts are conversations, right? It'd be mm -hmm. like if you and I were sitting down at, you know, IHOP, right? And just having a conversation. This is the same stuff we'd be talking yeah. about. And, you know, when it becomes the same five questions and the same mm -hmm. talking points, that's boring. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I would say with that too is, you know, show up with professional sounding equipment. You know, you mm -hmm. wouldn't go on television uh, without combing your hair. You know, why would you show up with an internal microphone? You know, nothing ruins your credibility more than sounding like you're calling in from the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. Now we do give people a little leeway right now on the hair, given the fact that the salons aren't open here. So just saying in California, my hair would not normally be as long as this. So please. <laughs> please open the salon soon. <laughs> but to your point is, yeah, it's like anything else. I mean, you've got to think about it. You wouldn't turn up for a presentation in front of uh, a bunch of people unprepared, unkempt, uh, with, with, you know, not looking professional. You wouldn't sort of get up on stage and say, oh, look, there's no microphone. Well, I'm just going to shout, okay? I mean, you'd make sure you have all those things. So you have to approach it in the same way. And I think that's an issue. I think people get far too casual sometimes just because of, they think, well, it's online. I agree with you. And I, I call it disrespecting the audience, mm -hmm. right? Because, well, it's, it, it's only a podcast, right? Yeah. Well, you're talking to hundreds, thousands of people throughout time and yeah. you're not going to show up prepared, right? If, yeah. I, if I show up to a physical stage and there's 100 people there and I suck, right? Mm -hmm. There's only 100 people. There's no record of it. They yeah. might tell some people, but they'll forget yeah. about it. If you do that on a podcast interview, it's there for all time. So yeah. I think you really have to you know, value the audience, value the stage that you're on. Yeah. And as you said, I mean, be respectful of the fact that you're getting access to somebody else's audience. And therefore, you, know, you need to treat that with respect. Um, so, OK, so if you uh, when you have your clients and you get them on, you know, and you get them to the right podcast, how do you prepare them to be the best that they can be when they when they go on? That, that's a great question. And it's something that everyone should do and make it easy for the host to prepare also. So mm -hmm. as a guest you should be listening to a couple episodes. Get the idea. Is this, you know, is this a, uh, a G-rated podcast or is this an R-rated podcast? Yeah. Um, do they laugh or are they serious? Do they talk mm -hmm. over each other? All of those things are important and you're getting invited to a party, right? So you better know what that party is about. You know, if it's a luau, don't show up in black tie or vice versa. Right. And so you need to do that. You know, understand who the host is, who the audience is, um, what kinds of things they talk about. You know, once again, you want to ruin your credibility if they ask the same question to every, every guest. And maybe it's just one at the end. And you go, huh, you know, John, I've never thought about that. What you're <laughs> screaming to the audience is, I'm not one of you. I've never listened to this before. Yeah. So make yeah. sure you're comfortable with that. And we help all our clients with that. You know, we give them a brief sheet um, on every podcast. Somebody described it as like uh, what they whisper in politicians' ears just mm -hmm. before they get off the plane or before they go on stage. It says, okay, here's how you're connecting. Here's, you know, about the host, about the guest. Here's the social media to click to. Here's, here's their name and here's the pronunciation of their name. 
I, yeah. I was on a show the other day and the host name is Nina, right? Don't call her Nina because right. all, of the, all of the audience knows her as Nina. And if you come in, it just shows, hey, you're not one of us. So yeah, that's how you yeah. prepare for yourself. But then in the same way, make it easy for the host to prepare for you, right? Um, they're busy. They're doing a lot of work. So, uh, you know, we always, for our clients, put together what we call a one sheet, right? Mm -hmm. Don't give them a 10-page media yeah. kit that they've got to go through. But give them the bio, you know, common questions you can ask, how to be introduced, the pronunciation of your name, uh, the picture that you want used in social yeah. media. Don't make them go through, you know, Google images and go, well, I wonder if that's the Tom Schwab <laughs> or even, exactly. on, even on social media links, right? Um, uh, do you really want to think, oh, they'll, they'll pick out the right social media links for yeah, me yeah. and start promoting the wrong person. So all of those things, if you can do those as the guest, it'll take the pressure off the host and it'll make you look better. It'll make for a better conversation and they'll be able to promote it better. Yeah, and the host will love you for that because, as, as you said, there's nothing worse than, I mean, sometimes, uh, you know, when you're going to do a podcast, maybe you've got a lot of podcasts going on. Uh, if you have to then search around for the in information about somebody, it just makes it a lot harder when you get something like what Tom's in, you know, talking about the one sheet, which is a beautiful one there. It makes life so much easier and you're going to have a much better experience because of it. Yeah, and just, you know, make it easy for the other person to have a great conversation with you. Mm -hmm. Be a great guest, right? Yeah. You think about it. If somebody invites you over to their house as a guest, you show up on time, you show up prepared, yes. you compliment them, you know, uh, all of those things that don't show you, up you like bring, they're doing a favor. Yeah. You bring a gift and the gift in this case is your bio. To be honest, if you're one <laughs> sheet, it's the biggest gift. As I say home in Ireland, don't, don't show up with one hand longer than the other or one arm longer than the other, which means don't, don't be reaching out to take without giving. But um, so, um, yeah, I think the bio and the pronunciation, that's, a, that's one. I mean, I taught myself a while back that before every interview, I check the pronunciation of the person's name um, normally, um, just because I've had those experiences where I've had somebody who has a name that can't be pronounced in any other way than it's spelled. And it turns out that it is. And therefore, you know, you have to start over or whatever. And it's just awkward for everybody. So that's what I do now. But I think as a guest, if you were to preempt that, say, you know, because you know if you've got a name that people are going to have a hard time pronouncing, just spell it out phonetically for the person so, there's, so that they know in advance. And, and Or, you know, we'll sometimes we'll spell it out phonetically and put it rhymes with this, yes, right? Yes, so yes. it makes it so much easier. Yeah, yeah. No, I've had, I've had some guests who've had, you know, names that kind of sound a bit funny and they make a joke out of it. You know, they say, oh, this, it sounds like, and that's great. But it, de it definitely helps the situation. And then I think, um, so after, the, after they've done the interview, how do, you, how do you advise people in order to make the most out of that interview? I mean, to really, to really market that interview and to make sure that they get the greatest return on, on, on actually doing it. Yeah, and that is probably the, the part that is messed up the most, right? So you've had a great interview. You tell the host goodbye. The host goes off to do all of this work to put it together, to share it with the world. And often the guest will just go on, right? You've got mm -hmm. great content. You've built a great relationship, right? So make sure when that comes out that you're promoting it. You're promoting it on social media. You're tagging the host. If you want to get invited back, if you want to get invited on other shows, show that you help promote the show. The mm -hmm. other thing is this is such rich content, right? I've written a whole lot of blogs in my life but every one of them felt like a homework assignment. I love talking, right? So what I will do is I'll take the, the recording and have my team transcribe it. And then they'll clean it up and they'll make some blogs out of it. Yeah. They'll take a, a 60 second segment of genius. If I talk long enough, I'll get 60 seconds of genius in there somewhere. <laughs> and they'll, they'll make a video clip out yeah. of it. I normally need to talk for about two hours to get 10 seconds of genius, but that's just me. Well, my team is good. They'll, they'll edit stuff together and go, this is what he meant to say. But you can do all of that. And uh, yeah. last year around the holidays, um, I, I challenged them. I said, how much content can you get out of one interview? 
And they got about a month's worth of content mm -hmm. out of every interview. And you think about it, most of us, our most valuable thing is our time. So yep. if you don't have time to, to write blogs, to do social media posts, all the rest of that, just do a podcast interview and have somebody else repurpose it. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. And I think that's the way to think of it. Don't think of it as just, a, a, okay, I did the interview, now move on. Think of it as it's raw material. It's an interview, but as you say, it can be a blog post, could be multiple blog posts. It can be an audio podcast. It can be multiple audio podcasts. Uh, there's lots of different ways you could, I mean, we often do what we've done in the past actually with sales pop is sometimes um, we'll do, we'll turn them into um, infographics. If they're interesting enough, we'll turn them into slide shares. Lots of, there's lots of different ways you can use it. And we, you know, there's a lot of problems in the world today, mm -hmm. but there's no better time to be alive. You think about it. Yeah. We can create in the way that's easiest for us and then repurpose in ways that are easiest for others. You know, right now, podcasts are listened to by about 51% of the U.S. population. And I remember somebody asking me, when do you think it'll get to 100%? It's like radio and TV never got to 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 10% of the U.S. population is hearing impaired. They're not going to listen to a podcast, but they might read the transcript. Yeah, and then I think also the, the part two is like some people even still – sort of think, well, a podcast, but that's that thing on Apple, isn't it? And you say, so I never listen to podcasts. And I say, well, do you ever watch Joe Rogan on YouTube or one of these people? Yeah, yeah, podcast. Oh, I didn't know that was a podcast. You know, John, one of my predictions for this de decade is I think right now we're recording this in 2020. There's mm -hmm. going to be somebody listening in 2030 that every time we say podcast, they laugh. Yeah, because in 1920, radio was called wireless telegraph, and by right. by 1930, it was radio. And mm -hmm. I asked my two youngest daughters uh, about a year ago, "What's the pod stand for in podcast?" They rolled their eyes and said, "I don't know, Dad. What's the pod stand for?" You know, they don't know what an iPod was. To yeah. them, it's just on-demand content, and uh, so a lot of people listen to podcasts and they don't know what it is. Yeah, I know. Yeah, well, you know, I'm old enough to know about growing back up in Ireland, you know, where we used to have the transistor, the transistor <laughs> radio. <laughs> and you could, so if I said to somebody now saying, I want to go up, we used to listen to the transistor, they'd be like, what, the transformer? What, what, the, what is that? What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, so it'll be funny. It'll be funny for sure. Okay, so Tom, before we finish up, um, what, what's the last piece of advice you would give to somebody who wants to dip their toe into the podcast interview arena? Yeah, I would just challenge them. What's ordinary to you is amazing to other people, right? What you know could help people. And we can't say, well, I can't do it because I live in Southwest Michigan or I've got stage <laughs> fright. You know, now it's so easy. Be a podcast host, be a podcast guest, put blogs out there. You know, you've been blessed by people and, mm -hmm. and helped by people. You know, we're blessed to be a blessing. So I would just encourage everyone to share what you know. And if we can help you in any way at Interview Valet, we'd be happy and honored to do that. Yeah, and listen, all of Tom's uh, information being his contributor bio, but please, Tom, do tell people a little bit more about you and Interview Valet. Yeah, and so with that, I'll make it easy. If they just go to interviewvalet, with a V, dot com forward slash sales pop. Um, I'll make a page there. It's called a welcome right. page. Uh, you can do the same thing uh, for your podcast interviews. It's the best practices. And there's three ways that um, you know we could help you. One is there's just an assessment. It's a podcast interview marketing assessment. Answer 12 questions and it'll give you a score on whether or not this will work for you. Uh, I wrote a book called Podcast Guest Profits, How to Grow Your Business with the Targeted Interview Strategy. I sell a lot on Amazon, but I give more away. So mm -hmm. same thing, if you go to interviewvalet.com forward slash sales pop, um, we'll have that there. And if you're like, wow, I can see how being on podcast interviews could help me, you know, as a coach, as a consultant, as an author, as a brand, um, and you would like to talk about how we could help you with that, I'll put my calendar there too. So it'll all be there at interviewvalet.com forward slash sales pop. Listen, thanks a lot, Tom. I really appreciate that. And I would, to be honest, if you're thinking about getting into this, it's, it, it, to some people, it may seem simple at the beginning, but it's quite a complicated world. And the fact that there's a lot of people out there and finding the right ones, I would really encourage you to 
to look at Tom and look at his services. It's a much faster way for you to get into it and, and I think uh, a much more efficient way. So I would encourage you to check out uh, Tom and Interview Valet. All right, well, listen, Tom, this has been great. Uh, thank you very much for joining me all the way from Kalamazoo today. I just wanted to say the word again, I'm sorry. It's love the name. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, John. Um, yeah, this is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeline of CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.